Good morning and welcome to Community Conversations. My name is Kathy Jordan and I'm the chair for the Elmhurst Senior Commission. We hope that you're all healthy and safe in your homes. On February 28th, you don't have to wear this mask. I'm hoping that you all get out. Spring is in the air. Today I heard tons of cardinals singing. So I just encourage you to go out and enjoy the days that are really, really nice. Isolation for seniors is not a good thing. It's something that you know would be very you know, devastating to you. We as a senior commission are, offers, are offering community conversations that, so you can receive information from the comfort of your home. Today, we ask that you sit back, have a cup of coffee, and enjoy our presentations. The senior commission provides information, advice, and advocacy to enhance the quality of life for adults in Elmhurst. We would like to thank Mayor Levin and the City Council for all of their support. Without that, we would not be able to have these educational programs. You are only as good as the people that you work with, and I would like to thank Heidi Forbush, who is our Education Chair, and Chris Hansen for helping us today. They do an outstanding job, and boy, I couldn't do this without them. Let me tell you a little bit about our presenter and our programs today. Today we have Angela Benston, who is presenting senior programs and services provided by Age Guide under the Older Americans Act. I will tell you a little bit about Angela. Angela is a graduate of Benedictine University with a master's in clinical psychology. She has over 24 years of experience working in DuPage County's not-for-profit sector with families, seniors, caretakers, and community partners. Angela is an accomplished cl uh, clinician and clinical manager, certified dementia practitioner, and a certified Alzheimer's disease dementia care trainer with the National Council of Certified Dementia Practitioners. Practitioners. She has expertise in senior programming, including program development, caregiving, resources, long-term services and supports, and dementia care. Known for her advocacy work on behalf of older adults and their families, Angela is currently the Director of Development and Strategic Partnerships at Age Guide Northeastern Illinois. In her role at Age Guide, she supports Age Guide's vision to enhance the quality of life for people on their aging journey. Age Guide does this by being a vital resource and advocate for people as they age by providing thoughtful guidance, supportive services, and meaningful connections. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Angela Benston, who will share all the resources that Age Guide provides. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Benson, like Kathy said, Director of Strategic Partnerships and Development at Age Guide. Our vision at Age Guide is to enhance the quality of life for all people on their aging journey. Today, I would like to share the programs and services with you that are offered under the Older Americans Act. And I'd also like to start to build a partnership where Age Guide becomes that vital resource, advocate, and trusted community partner that you can turn to for thoughtful guidance, support services and meaningful connections. Today we are going to cover several topics. An overview of the Older Americans Act, the Aging Network in Illinois, and the role of area agencies. Some statistics about our aging population, who we serve, the cost and the benefits of our programs. Older Americans Act programs and services which are available for all older adults and how you can access these services. And finally, we can work together to serve the older adult population better. As we discuss services for older adults, it's essential to begin with the Older Americans Act because it lays the foundation for the work we do today. It was passed by Congress in 1965. The Older Americans Act created the National Aging Network. The intent of the act is to provide funding and services that enable older adults to remain independent and engaged with their communities. It also provides funding to support family caregivers. While the Older Americans Act programs are available to anyone age 60 and older, they are targeted to support the most vulnerable older adults, including those with limited social, financial, and technological resources. 
The Aging Network is a national network of federal, state, and local agencies that receive funding to support the Older Americans Act programs and services. The Aging Network includes the Administration on Community Living at the federal level, state units on aging. In Illinois, that would be the Illinois Department of Aging. Then agent area agencies like aging, area agencies on aging like Age Guide, and then local service providers. The chart on this slide depicts how the money flows. The Illinois Department on Aging provides Older American Act funds along with state general revenue funds to area agencies on aging. The Area Agency on Aging in turn uses an RFP process to grant fund these to local agencies to provide direct services for older adults and their caregivers. The funding generally covers 40 or to 60 percent of the actual cost of providing the services. So the organizations that receive funding must supplement their expenses by raising local matching dollars. There are 13 area agencies on aging split into planning and service areas in Illinois. Age Guide Northeastern Illinois covers the eight collar counties outside suburban Cook County, and we're PSA number two on the map. Age Options is our sister area agency on aging that covers suburban Cook County. It's PSA 13 on the map. And Chicago Department of Family Support Senior Service Division covers the city of Chicago and their PSA 12. All area agencies on aging, regardless where they are located, have the same responsibilities to plan, to coordinate, and to administer community-based programs and services for older adults. We connect older adults and caregivers with those community services in several ways. First, it's through advocacy. Area Agency on Aging are advocates for older adults. We inform and affect policy change that supports aging at home and in the community with optimal health, independence, and well-being. Through planning, Area Agencies on Aging understand the needs of the individuals living in the communities. We interact with community leaders, with healthcare partners to identify gaps in services and plans to meet the future needs of our rapidly growing population. Through coordination, area agencies on aging connect with the vast network of local providers to coordinate services and we serve as an unbiased resource for aging adults, their families and their caregivers and other senior organization. And last, it's through our partnerships. Area agencies on aging award funding to local agencies in each county to provide these vital Older Americans Act services. They oversee the programs to assure quality, and accountability. The Area Agency on Aging may be the direct service provider for some of these programs. For more than 45 years, Age Guide, formerly known as the Northeastern Illinois Area Agency on Aging, has been committed to our vision to enhance the quality of life for all people on their aging journey. Age Guide represents over 725,000 adults in our eight county planning and service area, and that's approximately 25% of the state of Illinois' 60 plus population. Older Americans Act's programs and services are needs-based, and they're designed for adults age 60 and older. The main requirement for these services is that you need the service, and you're 60 and, or older. Also, there is no income requirement for these services. People are welcome to donate money, but no one is de denied because of an inability to pay or an unwillingness to contribute toward the service. So now that you have a little bit better understanding of the Aging Network, let's talk more about the kinds of programs and services that are available under the Older Americans Act. A call to your local area on aging will likely trigger a referral to the Care Coordination Unit or the CCU in the county where you reside. The Care Coordination Unit provides these services listed on the screen. DuPage County Community Services Senior Service Division is the Care Coordination Unit or CCU for DuPage County. 
Let's talk about the services that you can access there. Information and assistance. It informs individuals about programs and services and how to access them. Options counseling is a person-centered, interactive decision support process to help you make decisions on what long-term supports and services you may need to remain in the community. Residential repair and renovation. This will assist with home maintenance and home modifications to allow older adults to stay safely in their community. Legal assistance, ar arranging for and aiding in solving civil legal matters. The counseling to help older individuals and families uh, cope with mental health concerns. Transportation services, scheduling and providing door-to-door, -door, fixed or unfixed route transportation service. Education, group-oriented lectures or classes that provide individuals with opportunity to acquire knowledge and skills suited to their interests and capabilities. Recreation programs, activities that foster health, social well-being of, of the individual. These programs are designed to reduce isolation and promote engagement, foster health and social well-being for our older adults. Health and wellness programs are a, an essential piece of the aging puzzle. When you consider that approximately 92% of older adults have at least one chronic health condition and 77% have at least two. One in four older adults will struggle with anxiety or depression. Age Guides funds evidence-based health promotion programs that are proven to manage chronic health conditions like take charge of your health. This includes a workshop to enable older adults to manage their chronic health conditions, improve compliance, and communicate more effectively with their health care provider. Matter of balance. The program teaches older adults how to reduce fall risk and how to ease their fears of falling inside their home. The Fit and Strong exercise program is designed to help seniors with stiffness and pain be more active and move more confidently through their, in their daily life. Healthy Ideas provides a screening tool to help older adults seek the care they need for depression and anxiety. Nutrition services are one of the biggest funded services that Age Guide has to offer, and Lourdes will be talking more about this in just a few minutes. Ensuring that <coughs> excuse me, caregivers have access to the educational supports they need is vitally crucial to the health of the caregiver and the care that the care receiver is going to get. Without these caregivers, many older adults and people with disabilities are at a very high risk for institutionalization. Age Guide has programs and services that support family caregivers. The age eligibility for these programs is a little different. Services are available to unpaid, informal caregivers age 18 and older when caring for a senior, a disabled older adult, or someone with dementia. Support for grandparents raising grandchildren and relatives raising children age 55 and over is also available. The services provided under the Family Caregiver Support Program include respite care, support groups, individual counseling, education, and training, including our evidence-based stress-busting class for caregivers. It also ha may have gap-filling gap funds, which are flexible funding that can be used for unforeseen expenses not covered by other means, such as grab bars or ramps to get in and out of your homes. Elder rights services include adult protective services and the long-term care ombudsman program. Legal services are available for older adults for civil cases and services such as advanced planning, living wills, living wills, Medicaid denials, social security, guardianship, or landlord disputes. Adult protective services, services those 60 and older and adults with disability age 18 and older. They provide investigation, intervention, follow-up services to victims of alleged abuse, neglect, or financial exploitation. In FY 2020, APS responded to 3,000 
219 cases of abuse, neglect, or exploitation reports. The Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program is a resident-directed advocacy program that protects and improves the quality of life for residents in various long-term care settings, protecting residents' rights, including freedom from abuse, neglect, poor care, isolation, or lack of choice or meaningful activities. Okay. Age Guide Northeastern Illinois has funded partners in each of the age counties that serve as care coordination units, or CCUs. The CCUs provide access services to the Older Americans Act programs and services. They are also an excellent source for seniors age 60 and older and their family members of information. You can find more information about the care coordination units on our website at ageguide, one word, dot org, including a direct link to, well, to every funded partner. Like this. As more Americans live longer, we need to adjust our public systems to ensure access and availability for older adults. Area aging, aging, agencies on aging support community-based services that are accessible and consumer-focused because when older adults and their caregivers receive community-based services, their health and longevity improves. Community-based services are more cost-effective. Research tells us that people overwhelmingly describe aging well as being an integral part of their community. Age Guide works closely with the Illinois Department on Aging and supports its programs and initiatives. While not under the Older Americans Act, the Community Care Program, or CCP, is designed to support older adults in the community. CCP is administered through the Illinois Department on Aging. It's a Medicaid aging waiver in Illinois for eligible managed care recipients. Services include homemaker assistance, adult day services, emergency response, automatic medication dispensers. Seniors must meet the needs and asset guidelines to be eligible for this program. The Care Coordination Unit, or CCU, provides assistance and case management for the community care program. And in DuPage County, that would be DuPage County Senior Services. The Illinois Department on Aging and Area Agencies also participate in a statewide initiative to reduce social isolation. Social isolation among older adults was a problem even before COVID-19. The shelter at home orders over the past two years have dramatically increased the risk of seniors becoming disconnected, lonely, depressed, anxious, and isolated. To keep older adults in the community connected, Age Guide offers a friendly visiting program and a telephone reassurance program. Okay. Other statewide initiatives that Age Guide are currently charged with is collaborating on the Aging Network's funded service with our funded service providers and other community partners to address the needs of persons with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias and the specialized needs of those caregivers. There are several new and innovative projects that Age Guide has been piloting across our region, including expanding our evidence-based stress busting program for family caregivers, our Music and Memory Alive Inside program, the Good Memory Summer Rocks program, and the Memory Cafe Sing Along. There is also funding to assist with items or services not covered by insurance to enable individuals with memory loss and their family caregiver to remain safe in the community. If you are interested in any of these programs, please reach out to Age Guide at 630-293-5990 or visit our website for more information. Thank you, Angela, for that wonderful presentation about resources and information that seniors can really use in this, in this time and all of the time. I want to share with you that uh, as a point of information, Age Guide funds Metropolitan Family Services, which is housed here at City Hall, but will be moving shortly to the Park District Senior Program and then um, the Meals on Wheels program. 
Also, the city of Elmhurst subsidizes those two programs. So they're important programs in addition to all of the other programs that Angela spoke about. So make sure that if you want any other information about Age Guide, to contact Angela at the phone number that she provided. Again, thank you, Angela. I'd like to share with you about our second presentation. It's going to be presented by Lords Chu. She's a registered dietitian who is going to be presenting senior nutrition information. Let me tell you a little bit about Lords. Lords Chu is a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist and is a graduate of DePaul University with a master's in public service management. Lords has 25 plus years of experience and has worked as a clinical dietitian in the long-term care setting. Lords is one of the nutrition specialists at Age Guide Northeastern Illinois. Age Guide is an area agency on aging created by Congress to implement the Older Americans Act, which we all heard about from Angela. Okay? In her role at Age Guide, Lords implements the Older Americans Act nutrition services throughout Age Guide's eight county planning and service area. Nutrition services include congregate meals and home delivered meals. She also oversees the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. At Age Guide, our mission is to, or their mission is to be a vital resource and advocate for people as we age by providing thoughtful guidance, supportive services, and meaningful connections. Lords is passionate about advocating for uh, older adults. She is a member of the Naperville Senior Task Force, and she has volunteered with Ride Assist Naperville. Without further ado, Lords, we want to hear about that nutrition. Come on up. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to talk about the 2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Dietary Guidelines for Americans was first published in 1980, and it's updated every five years. This is um, the joint effort of the USDA and the Health and Human Services. The Dietary Guidelines is developed to help all Americans, based on scientific evidence on health-promoting diets in people who represent the general U.S. population. The purpose is to promote health and prevent disease for the general public. It is not intended for treating chronic diseases. Guidelines are provided to encourage all Americans to start and maintain a healthy eating routine along with physical activity, improving what you eat can help reduce your risk of diabetes, heart diseases, some cancers, and obesity. Please check with your doctors what you are recommended to do in terms of physical activity. These guidelines are also used for federal programs such as school lunches and the senior nutrition program, which I will be taking later, talking about later on. This edition has a call to action. Make every bite count with the dietary guidelines. Focuses on choosing healthy foods and beverages rich in nutrients and staying within your calorie limit. The first guideline is follow a healthy dietary part pattern at every life stage, from infancy to older adulthood. It is never too early or too late to eat healthfully. Eating habits change throughout the lifespan. Simple changes can help you enjoy the foods and beverages you eat and drink to meet nutrient needs, help maintain a healthy body weight, and help lower your risk of health problems like overweight, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and some cancers. The food and beverages Americans consume have a profound impact on people's health. Again, it's never too late to start eating healthy. Okay. Uh, 
we have a tool that probably some of you are familiar with. It's called MyPlate. It is a very good tool that you could utilize. So here are some of the guidance for uh, the fruits. Just try to focus on whole fruits. That's lots, lots of vitamins, minerals, and also rich in fiber. Vegetables, vary your vegetables. I know um, for us, we're all creatures of habits. We might tend to eat the same types of food and probably it's also best to try new things. Actually, next month is the National Nutrition Month and, um, and that's one of their challenges is to uh, enjoy different types of food. Grains, make your grains uh, whole grains. And I can, um, and for protein, also vary those. Uh, um, try to cut down on red meats. Seafoods are highly recommended. And also beans, lentils are also very good source. Here are some of the recommendations for older adults. Consume five ounces of meat throughout the day. Highly recommend lean meats. Also include a lot of seafoods in there. Also nuts, beans, and lentils are good sources of protein. Five servings of fruits and vegetables throughout the day. Try to incorporate a rainbow of colors for your fruits and vegetables. Six servings of bread throughout the day. Three servings of milk and try to go for low fat dairy products. I know a lot of you are computer savvy and I highly recommend to visit my plate website and this is actually a sample of a meal plan that was printed out for and it it will customize it for you. You could put your height, your weight, and then it will also give you the recommendations of the serving portions. The number two recommendation is to customize and enjoy nutrient-dense foods and beverages choices to reflect personal preferences, cultural traditions, and budgetary considerations. I will later talk about cooking tips for one and or two. Number three, focus on meeting food groups with nutrient-dense foods and beverages and stay within caloric limits. Overall, Americans take, tend to take a lot of sugar intake. It is highly abundant in the foods that we eat. And here I would like to share some of the tips for you to cut down on that. All right, what you could do is skip the sugar and top your coffee with a dash of cinnamon, nutmeg, or coke or cocoa powder instead. This adds a little variety to the flavor of your coffee. I know, just like you, I do have sweet tooth. Indulge in naturally sweet desserts, such as fruits. There's so much abundance of fruits out there. Enjoy a fresh fruit salad, bake apples with cinnamon, or a piece of fruit out of the fridge. Also, how about trying to split that sweets? Share the dessert with a friend. Half a pastry or slice cake means only half of the sh sugar and calories for both of you. Also, pick lower sugar options. Choose packages that have less sugars, such as plain or low-fat yogurt, and sweetened canned fruits, and also go for fruits that are packed in its natural juice or water. Good. Okay, on this slide are some good sources of fiber. Again, overall, Americans do not take enough fiber. Some good sources are high fiber, whole, shredded wheat, your breakfast cereals, but just keep in mind that they also tend to be high in sugars. Also, 
Popcorn is a good source, a lot of fresh fruits and things like that. Also, um, okay. reading labels is also very important. What's exciting is that they have recently changed uh, the guidance to this one. They're actually uh, easier to use. Uh, and uh, so for this one, please take time to read the serving portions, okay? So servings per container and serving size information appear in larger letters now. But also, just keep in mind that it doesn't mean that this is the recommended portion. You could actually take half of that product if you need to. Also, calories go big, so make sure Again, these letters are bolder, so in overall guidance, typically for Americans, an 1,800 calorie diet is recommended. Also, one thing included here is the high and lows of percent of daily value. The percent daily value shows how much a nutrient in a serving of food contributes to a total daily diet. Daily values for nutrients have been updated, which may make the percent daily value higher or lower on the new nutrition facts label. As a general rule, 5% daily value or less is considered low. So if you take a few seconds to read that and it's below 5%, that's a good source. Anything that's at 20% means it is considered high. So when you're reading labels, watch out for trying to go for lower sugar content, sodium, and fats. Next slide, please. Okay, um, cooking for one or two could be challenging at home. And I have a lot of recommendations here. First is, to start doing a quick inventory of what foods are available in the pantry. How many times we go to the grocery and when we come back that we have those items. So always do an inventory and also make that grocery list. Uh, this can help lower your food costs by using what's already available. Cook in large quantities of ground meats that can serve as a base for your dishes, such as chili, meatloaf, or any pasta dish. Serve the meats in small containers for quick meals. Also, if, if you have a neighbor that you wanna share that meal or a friend, feel, to, feel free to do so. I just wanna share a personal story. Many years ago, I have an older adult neighbor that um, would bring food to me every morning. She would just knock at my door and then bring me these tiny bowls of meals. And that started a good friendship. She got to know my entire family. We all became longtime friends. And actually, my daughter is uh, named after her. So. Uh, just through that small bowl of food that we were able to have lasting memories. Also, salads are easiest to prepare, and by changing the salad dressings and fixings can alter the flavor and presentation. The pre-cut salad combination makes meal prep easier by adding any dried fruits, different nuts, or even canned beans. Also, make sure you're watching using the type of dressing. They, too, they do tend to be high in fat. Make your favorite soups in large quantities and freeze the rest that can be used on different days of the month. Sandwiches are always easy to make. Again, switch the type of bread and meats. I know when I go to the local uh, restaurants, I go, wow, this is the same ham and uh, cheese that I have at home, but their bread is just good. So you could try different kinds of bread. Include dishes that are staple in your diet, including food favorites on your weekly menu. 
Try using pre-cut vegetables and seasonal fruits. Also, alternating the pasta and the sauces can instantly change the dish. Try loaded potatoes with different toppings. Make your meals interesting. Plan team meals at least once a month. Try the frozen entree selection and make sure to check the sodium content. Probably this is one way if you're trying to try different ethnic meals, different variety, you could just go for the frozen section because it might be harder to cook at home. Also, how about serve a breakfast menu for dinner? Like Kathy said earlier, I come from the long-term care industry and my residents just love it when they're eating breakfast for dinner. That is actually a food favorite. Meal kits are also getting popular nowadays. That's also a good option if you're cooking for one or two. So just keep in mind, they tend to be more pricey, but it won't hurt to give it a try. Okay. Planning meals is key in helping reduce the stress of making any meal. So again, feel free to go to this USDA website and they have a lot of resources, right? I know many times we, we might plan menus for big things, big parties, but guess what? This is something that we could do on a weekly basis and this will help you ha eat healthier, incorporate um, things that you like, and also uh, be, stay within budget. Okay, so please keep in touch to learn more about the services for Age Guide. Age Guide. Visit our website, subscribe to our monthly newsletter called The Aging Report, and engage with us in the social media, including Facebook and Twitter. We have lots of useful articles, resources about events in the art area. I would like to invite you to learn more about home delivered meals. Many of you may have heard about Meals on Wheels or home delivered meals. These are two items for the same program. Are you or someone you know interested in home delivered meals? What are home delivered meals? Home delivered meals are served to older adults who are homebound and are unable to provide their own meals. These meals allow them to be at home and be independent. Meals are delivered midday up to five days per week. Meals are approved by registered dietitians and each meal provides one third of the daily nutri nutrition needs of the average older adult. An assessment by the care coordination unit needs to be completed to determine eligibility to receive home delivered meals. There is no cost to participate in the program. However, par participants are welcome to donate toward the cost of the meal. No one is denied a meal if una unable to contribute. Who qualifies for home delivered meals? Older adults who are ideal candidates for home delivered meals include those who are 60 plus and are homebound. Do you know somebody who has had a recent illness or surgery, a loss of mobility, or other barriers that makes it difficult for them to stop and prepare food at home? Home delivered meals may be a great option to consider. Home delivered meals are for those who are frail and are homebound, unable to shop, prepare or obtain meals, have no one available to prepare meals for them or take them to the store, and for an older adult who is unable to attend the community dining meal program. Next slide, please. Here are some benefits of home delivered meals. Home delivered meals offer well-balanced nutrition meals to improve health. A daily well-being check is part of the service and helps ensure the safety and health of the older adult. For many participants, the person who delivers the meal is the only person they may have a conversation with on that day. 
male participants are also able to receive information about nutrition education and other local services available to support them. Home delivered meals help the recovery process of older adults from recent hospitalization and rehabilitation. Home delivered meals also uh, provide peace of mind for the recipient and their families and their loved ones who know that because of these daily meals, the recipient is able to stay in their home and be a part of the community where they want to be. The two most important nutritional health services identified by participants at age guides need assessments were 27% identified meals to be delivered to their homes and 26% said well-being checks with meals. Next slide, please. Home delivered meals make a big impact. Meals on Wheels on America has provided the following statistics that show just how important meals are in the lives of homebound older adults. Daily home meal delivered meals help keep eight out of 10 recipients who have been previously fallen from falling again. Nine of 10 recipients say home delivered meals improve their health. Two out of three recipients reported that home delivered meals make half or more of all foods eaten that day. Also, nine out of 10 recipients report that home delivered meals help them live independently. Lastly, home delivered meals can serve an older adult for an entire year for the same cost as just one day in a hospital or 10 days in a nursing home. Next slide, please. By now, you must be wondering where you can get home delivered meals near you. Hopefully, you can think of someone who can, get, who can benefit from getting home delivered meals. Contact Age Guide at 630-293-5990 or email at info at ageguide.org or go to www.ageguide.org for more information. Next slide, please. So visit our website, subscribe to our monthly newsletter, call the Aging Report, and engage with us in social media. We have lots of articles, resources, and notices about events in the area. Welcome to Community Dining. Are you an older adult seeking healthy meals, social engagement, or access to community resources? If you answered yes to any of these, then the Community Dining Program may be a good fit for you. I would like to invite you to our community dining program. The community dining program is intended to provide opportunities to make new friends in your community and improve your overall health and well-being. Next slide, please. Community dining allows older adults to enjoy a meal in a welcoming environment with fellow friends and neighbors. Meals are often provided at senior centers, school, churches, restaurants, as well as other community settings. The meals are available throughout Age Guides, Eight County service each weekday. Meals are served once a day, five or more days a week. Community dining sites are easily accessible at safe facilities, and meals are approved by registered dietitians containing one third of your daily nutritional needs. Next slide, please. What does restaurant dining offer? Many senior services are beginning to partner with local restaurants to provide older adults with a restaurant dining experience. 
Restaurant programs will provide you with the opportunity to socialize during the meal and feel more connected with your community in a more attractive ambience. The restaurant program is designed to allow you to order from a menu with a variety of meal options. Not only are the meals delicious, but they will also provide you with one third of your daily nutritional needs. Next slide, please. Come for a meal and stay for the fun. Home delivery. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. Come for a meal and stay for the fun. Community dining sites offer a variety of enrichment activities, including but not limited to bingo, education topics, team meals, and holiday parties, nutrition activities, blood pressure and health screenings exercise classes, and dance classes. Next slide, please. Are you eligible for community dining program? If community dining program sounds like something you or your loved one would be interested, please consider signing up for the program. Participants of the community meal program must be age 60 and older. Others who may qualify for community dining programs include the spouses of the eligible indiv individual, regardless of their age, and individuals with disabilities residing with an eligible individual. Contact the nutrition provider in your area for more information. Next slide, please. A suggested donation is requested and appreciated for all meals. However, it is not required. There is no income requirement for community dining meals, and no one will be denied a meal if unable or unwilling to contribute. Next slide, please. Community dining improves your health. Many, sorry, sorry, yeah, okay, okay almost there, okay, okay, all right, okay, all right. Community dining improves your health. People who regularly participate in congregate meals feel a sense of community and connection with their peers. Research shows that people at any age are much more fulfilled when they are part of the group. Older adults with a sense of purpose are happier, more fulfilled, and healthier. Community meals give you a daily activity to look forward to. The opportunity to make new friends and form friendships during congregate mealtimes have been proven to decrease stress and loneliness. If you join us for community dining, you will be included in great conversation and activities while enjoying a well-balanced and great tasting meal. Did you know that socializing at li as little as 30 minutes per day has shown to increase brain health and cognitive ability? Interacting with others can be helpful in decreasing the likelihood of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. The engaging activities that community dining programs offer allows older adults to use their minds and keep them active. Next slide, please. Benefits to community dining. Did you know that nine out of 10 people would recommend community dining programs to a friend? Here are some of the reasons why. Participating in community dining can save you time, effort, and money. Learn about good nutrition, do less shopping and cooking, avoid missing meals, support your independence, 
socialize, and have fun. As you can see, there are several benefits of community meal programs centers. The emotional and physical benefits these programs provide have a real impact on those who participate in them. Next slide, please. Where can you find community dining? If you or someone you know is interested in participating in our community dining program, please contact us at info at hguide.org or call 630-293-5990. We will help you find a local community dining site. Next slide, please. Do keep in touch. We have a variety of tools and resources to help you keep up with the latest on what's going on and what's important to older adults and their caregivers. I want to encourage you to subscribe to Age Guides Aging Report and engage with us on social media by following Age Guide on Facebook and Twitter. There you will find that we post useful articles, resources, and notices about events in the area. I want to thank Lords for that wonderful presentation. It was very informative. Meals on Wheels, community dining, encouraged breakfast for, for dinner. I always like that, yum yum. And I want to thank you for reminding people about sugar. I'm the first one to say forget the food past the Twinkies. So I'm really appreciative of all of your tips. I hope you enjoyed our program as well. Thank you to Lords Chu and Angela Benston for a very informative presentation about senior nutrition and what Age Guide provides for seniors. I always end the program with a quote. The beauty of life does not depend on how happy you are, but on how happy others can be because of you. Thank you for all of your, you know, uh, coming and not coming. I wish you were coming. Thank you for participating in community conversations, and we hope to see you in the fall. I mean, I'm hoping that's not a false hope, but I'm hoping that we can actually have an audience in the fall. Stay safe, and thank you again for uh, participating in community conversations.